So, our robot is a Rubik's Cube solver. Yeah. Um, called hey. Jason. Oh, okay. uh, I'm Luis. Oh, I'm Luis. Hi. Security one? So, our first idea, my first idea was a Ferris wheel robot. Um, it looked really cool, but eventually I just thought it was, um, it wasn't really useful, just an entertainment thing. And the other one was amazed for, yeah. Um, it was inspired after the Cube Stormer, which is really cool, because they could solve a Rubik's Cube in like 4.2 seconds. But then we started to go with this sort of design because we... This guy used four NXTs to end of phone. Yeah. <laughs> um, our first design was like was a pentagon shape with two arms and a, and like a crane thing. That's the name that flipped the cube, but we didn't have enough motors. And also, I probably sent it on that side. Yeah. And there are some of our designs. Awesome. Well, the J is. For, uh, do you want to explain? Yeah, we'll explain the J later, but. So the crane part was yeah, because, of, <coughs> like you saw in that other picture, it was originally going to have two arms that could clamp and turn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there were some obstacles because <laughs> it was really hard to get a clamp that could turn and like um, and clamp because of the way that the motors were just too big to fit. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, some of the parts we used, we used the NXD, of course. Um, we used a touch sensor. I don't think we have that to work yet, it but works. yeah, yeah, <laughs> we have we have the base that I finally got sturdy yesterday, and the claw that's based off of the tilted twisters ones. Um, the housing was the first part I did, and the only thing I needed was strength. So basically, I was obsessed over um, those parts the whole time. You can see like all the parts. I basically ported them all to make it strong as I could. And as for the claw, I needed to make it really sturdy and strong, and um, but not strong enough so that it'll tip the base over or make the cube fall. So we based it off the the tilted twisters ones, but we had to add a few things to it. And for the base, I, I must have built the base like four times because it wasn't sturdy enough because this claw was too strong. So it had to house the Rubik's cube, but it had to be. Um, smooth enough so that the cube could fit and go back down. Um, our biggest obstacle probably was <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> and <laughs> it was a time constraint. Um, um, if we had more time, we'd be able to fix it. And all, um, but the fast pace led. Um, helped me make it faster, and it gave me a lot of ideas because I had to fit it in with the time. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of technical obstacles as well, uh, mainly the code, because I started writing it in Java so I could have a, a like, something so I could see how the cube was moving, but, and Java doesn't go too well with the NXT, mainly because of arrays, which work quite differently in Java than they do in um, then the NXC. So uh, I had to basically rewrite all of, and here's how we solved the cube. We um, used um, some an algorithm just online that for various. So yeah, I used Java at first to kind of see what how the cube was moving and to get all the um, to get all the twists down. But then and we also tried to do it on the Arduino, but that doesn't use Java either. And arrays were the biggest issue. So eventually, eventually I moved it into um, NXC and I just got rid of all the arrays and made a variable for each different face of the cube, like each individual part. <coughs> all right, and we were going to use these color sensors. However, um, we kind of got them to work, but they weren't too accurate. Yeah. Like blue and green weren't very distinguishable. Yeah. We were gonna use use 
the Arduino to um, communicate with the color sensors because obviously they're not NXT color sensors. Um, yeah, so, and we were also gonna, then going to have the Arduino communicate to the NXT with um, what the color sensor was reading. And if we had more time, we would do that. Um, and yet, so there were some um, other programming issues, mainly the base and the arm timing and all that stuff. So we had to really mess around with the numbers. And even though the rotation sensor has like 90 degrees, you would think it would turn the base 90 degrees, but it's really like 81 degrees yeah. to make it go 90 degrees. Exactly. I um, it would want to move 360 and go like 355 or something. So we had to really adjust like when the crane was on, when the crane wasn't off. We had two different degrees for it. And basically what's going on is when you put the cube here, um, these like bars will hold it down and then the crane, if it had to twist, it'll twist the top too. And then the crane can push it and flip it if it had to. And that's basically all the movements. Um, all in all, with the time we had, I'd say I'm pretty happy with it, even though we didn't get the color sensors in. Um, we got the base pretty strong, the claw is working fine, um, besides like a few degree things. Oh okay. yeah, so it stops working when it gets low on battery. Oh yeah, that's why the J was for, because the Java thing. If we had more time would connect the Arduino through I2C, which I tried figuring out, but again, the color sensor wouldn't work. So there's really no point to put the Arduino in. And the base is good, but it could be a little sturdier. Besides that, pretty good. Yeah. based off of what it looked like when I was testing it. But you can, you'll be able to see the movements that it... sensor, um, we just put in what the cube look like, looks like into the computer and that's how it knows what to do with it. Because we didn't have the color sensors. 